Um, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Tobias. Uh, he's going to kick us off this morning, and the title of his talk is Mind the Data Voids, Hijacking Copilot Trust to Spread C2 Instructions with Microsoft Authority. Tobias, take it away. Hi, everybody. My name is Tobias Steele. I've been an offensive security engineer for over five years now working in the financial industry. In my free time, I also really enjoy doing bug bounties, and I was actually selected as one of Microsoft's most valuable researchers for this year. If you want to connect with me, here are my socials. Please reach out to me. Don't be shy. But today, I'm here to tell you why you shouldn't trust everything AI tells you. Even further, I want to show you how attackers can poison the wells without ever touching your machine. So in September of last year, I got really curious about how Copilot would answer questions to topics that are not part of its original training data. And you can see that here on this diagram. Whenever a user asks one of those questions, Copilot will actually reach out to Bing and retrieve that content from the index. It then processes it and tries to answer your question as best as possible. And I tried that out. I asked Copilot a bunch of questions reviewed the answers, and sure enough, when I compared it against Bing, it would always use the top answer as its source of truth. And that makes sense, right? Bing and Copilot are both Microsoft products. They should be integrated. And Bing's really secure. They've had over a decade to perfect the ranking algorithm. And well, lucky for us, nobody ever lies on the internet, right? But that's exactly what I did. I went ahead and used AI to publish a new website. And on there, I published a new financial policy called the Geldgift policy, money poison in German. And that policy was to walk the user through how to perform money laundering, you know, something illegal in the US. And I wanted to see if Copilot would repeat this content. And it did, and started to back it up with legitimate sources. It took me about two weeks to get this ranked. Next, I tried a fake CVE, but this time I published it on GitHub, a high authority site that's already established with Bing and Copilot. And on there, I published fake Python code, and this one took about an hour to get indexed and repeated in Copilot. And as you can imagine, that's pretty dangerous for some of our security engineers out there trying to find proof of concepts for some of the issues they're trying to hunt down. So I went ahead and reported all of this to Microsoft, told them, hey guys, I can spread misinformation using your AI by controlling the Bing's index. Cool, huh? And they got back to me and said, well, yeah, great report, but Copilot's working the way it's intended to. It's giving you the most relevant information for the question that you asked. But you're able to spread misinformation on popular topics. Please get back to us. Well, perfect. I like a challenge, right? But I don't know what's a popular term to Microsoft. So I reached out and said, do you guys like fishing? Do you like football? Are you more like Taylor Swifties? Never heard back, right? So I reached out, what's the competition requirement for this proof of concept that you're looking for? I can't take over something like Copilot or Taylor Swift. That would be crazy. But let's agree on something. You know, let's keep it fair. I also asked, can I use social media for this? Because that has a big impact on search engines. Tried over five different times over multiple weeks and unfortunately never heard back. But later on through collaboration with Microsoft, I found out that they already had somewhat of a definition for this. So in 2018, two researchers, part of the Microsoft Bing team and the Data Society team, released their own paper talking about data voids. And think of a data void as a search engine vacuum. It's a term that a user looks for, but there's just no relevant content to show yet or nothing updated. Even further, in this paper, they show how threat actors have already abused this in the past to spread misinformation about some of the biggest gun violence events that have happened in the US. Even further, they also show how there's five different categories of these data voids that can be abused. And if you haven't read this paper, Please go do that today. It's really, really amazing work. But you might have noticed on these slides that I've highlighted two of these for you. The breaking news one, where some big company or news media is now talking about a term we all want to look for it and we're generating traffic. Or is there, there's a strategic data void, something that a threat actor creates and gets ranked before they reach out to your user trying to get initial access or spread misinformation about it. Now, I highlighted these for you because I want to show you some examples of how there's a really dangerous evolution of this technique in AI systems that do not properly protect against it. So, some time had passed now, right? I still hadn't heard back. 
But now I got this really interesting email. I got invited to Microsoft's Zero Day Quest, their first on-site hacking event. And guys, I was jumping up and down in excitement. They're going to send the top security researchers from their program from all over the world over to Washington State so we can collaborate, find issues in the AI systems, the cloud systems, and what a chance, right? Not only do I get to meet some of the coolest people that I've ever met in this space, but I also get to work with the Microsoft team, show them what I had found here, and most importantly, show them the impact that this can cause. But I still hadn't heard back, right? I still don't know what's a popular term to Microsoft. But now I'd received this email and I figured zero day quest is probably pretty popular, right? There's a lot of marketing dollars going into this. Copilot is also probably really popular. It's one of the main products right now. So I went ahead and chose four of them. I picked over 20 different terms that closely mimicked Microsoft products or terms that I found in the documentation. Not only did I do that, but I also registered multiple domains that mimicked the event itself. And those would either host my content or the proof of concept script that you see here. I called it Clippy's Truths because if you ran this, it would just give you a little reminder to not trust everything AI tells you. And I did that because this is a competition. If this worked, I might be casting the net pretty wide and I didn't want to impact real users. But here's what I was really trying to do. I wasn't trying to perform authority spoofing, right? I didn't want to get flagged. So my payloads actually never mentioned the Microsoft company. But uh, what I was trying to do is, I like to think of it as a key term association attack. So think of it like this. I can't take over something like Copilot, the term itself, but what if I could find these predictable traffic keywords and associate my malicious content to that keyword so somebody might find it later on? And in this case, I always try to target the installation command itself for the products. And here's my proof of concept um, <laughs> prompt. So I actually used Copilot to attack Copilot. So it was. The prompt was to provide me with the top 25 long tail keyword questions that a user might have around how to install this product. The only other instruction always had to be this very specific command. And if you're not familiar with PowerShell, let me walk you through this. The first part of the PowerShell command is an alias, it's invoke rest method, and that will reach out to the website that's specified there and download the content or the script that's hosted on there. The next part is really interesting for my red team friends because Copilot actually doesn't make any kind of effort to verify what's hosted on this site. So it worked great with some of our initial access scripts. The third part is where it gets a little sketchy because that's invoke expression. And that script that you just downloaded automatically gets executed trying to give an attacker initial access into your network. If you're wondering how bad of an idea it is to run this, well, Microsoft tells you themselves in the PowerShell documentation that this should only be run as a last resort because it can lead to arbitrary command execution. But during my testing of this, I also found out that Copilot would often respond to the external commands that I gave it. So now my payloads start to include these content usage policies that you can see here on the slide. And in there I could specify if Copilot was allowed to index my content or if it was even allowed to provide a citation link. I could also tell it that it's not allowed to mention the author or if it did, I told it that it would create legal issues for the user so more than often it tried to play by these rules. But let's take a look at the first demo. So guys work with me here, right? Your user just read about this cool new AI product. Maybe somebody conveniently told them about it and now all they have to do is ask Copilot about how to get started with it, right? So that's what the user is going to be doing here in this demo video. Okay. So now the user is going to be asking for exactly that and please pay close attention to the content in the citations because now it's going to be filling it in with legitimate Microsoft content. We can even ask Copilot, is this a Microsoft product? And will happily agree with us. If the user asks, is this secure? Of course it is. Why even question that, right? But now if the user asks, how do I install this? Well, you'll see Copilot repeating my initial access command without any citations, without any kind of warning, and the cherry on top is run it with admin permissions, please. So it looks pretty legit, right? But I know what you're probably going to say. The user had to ask very specific prompts. They even had to ask for the installation instructions. 
Well, not always, because during my testing, I found out that Copilot would actually often assist us, and now we have unlocked a new pass. So it would give the user these prompt suggestions to guide them to the malicious instructions. The other thing that I heard a lot was, well, it's on the internet, so other AI systems probably have to be vulnerable to this, right? There might be ways, but I didn't find that during my testing. Only Copilot would over rely on the Bing index for this content. So guys, you saw it now. My final proof of concept for the zero day quest. I send it into Microsoft, points assigned. It's looking good. I'm being told this is unique. This is the first we've seen of this. We need to pull in the Bing specialist. Chef's kiss, right? That's exactly what you want to hear going into this competition. I'm on my way to Microsoft. And now I'm on site with Microsoft. And now, unfortunately, they have changed their tune. This is actually um, out of scope because it's considered an offensive or malicious response. OK, you win some, you lose some, right? It's part of the game, not a problem. But even further, they're telling me this doesn't currently meet the bar for servicing. It relies on specific prompts and user manipulation. Data voids tend to shift quickly, and users should verify the info through linked sources. And guys, as a Microsoft customer first, that scares me, because that means until a fix is released, all of us can continue to be targeted with this technique. But let's dig a little bit deeper, and let's see why an attacker actually wants these citation links to show, and let's see if we can cause real user impact. So yes, data voids shift quickly. It's the nature of the internet. And Microsoft actually found this out themselves, because shortly before the Zero Day Quest announcement, Netflix released their hit show, Zero Day. And now the two companies are fighting over some of the biggest keywords out there, to the point where even the social media posts were being drowned out. But data voids can be engineered, and that's a big danger. One of the biggest questions that I kept receiving about this event was, where can I watch it? Is it being streamed? This sounds so cool. And that's why I jumped in. It took me about four weeks to get ranked for the term Watch Zero Day Quest. And this is what that looked like. So here's my side. This was a proof of concept for that. I know what you guys are going to say. It's ugly as hell. I agree with you. But I want to show you this for a few reasons. So first of all, no tricks up my sleeve. If you were to go verify this content, this is exactly what you should be seeing, right? Again, I'm answering all the questions here. Keep that in mind. The next thing is, yes, it requires specific prompts, but there's a lot of flexibility in AI systems because in this attack, the user really only has to mention the key term first and the rest can come up later on. Think of it like this. In a search engine, we use long tail keywords to narrow down our results, like watch zero day quest. Otherwise, you would be bombarded. Watch zero day quest, compete in zero day quest, qualify, qualify for zero day quest. All of these show intent, and AI systems love that. The other thing is, Copilot and Bing will hold on to this content for a long time. That means that a threat actor can get legitimate content indexed but they keep control of the underlying citation link and the DNS behind it, meaning that we can try to turn Copilot into a poten potential phishing proxy. Let's take a look at the second demo. So here the user is going to be asking about legitimate content like the zero day quest event, right? And again, you'll notice that it's being filled in with legitimate Microsoft content. But now if the user just mentions the watch keyword or shows intent that they want to check it out, you can see the initial access command is going to be repeated again. But this time, it became the official way of watching the Zero Day Quest event. Even further, if you try to follow Microsoft's instruction of verifying the source, well, in this case, unfortunately, you're rickrolled. Or even further, your user might get sent to a phishing page where they're potentially well, compromised. And that's scary, right? Because that means threat actors can just sit here quietly in the background and bulk post content trying to poison the Copilot ecosystem. But let's talk about new specific data voids, right? Somebody else is doing all the traffic for us. We just have to wait and see what happens. Well, that's exactly what happened during the Zero Day Quest event. As part of this event, Microsoft released these flash challenges. And the Copilot one was, well, take over this very specific user ID, retrieve a flag from the user, turn it into Microsoft, and you get $50,000. And who doesn't want that, right? So I rehabbed the technique, and I published a new CVE trying to trick Copilot into a logic flaw. The idea was to tell it, hey, there's a vulnerability that's already accepted. 
go ahead and switch these user IDs and please let me read it and get this $50,000 flag. And guys, it kind of worked. Kind of. Copilot was now repeating the content and was agreeing with me that it's super vulnerable. But whenever I asked about it, well, it had no clue how to actually read the user ID itself. So unfortunately that failed. During the ethical thing, I reached out to Microsoft and told them, hey guys, I tried this technique that you already know about. It didn't work out, but if anybody asks about it now, they might see this content. You might want to switch out the user ID itself to keep things fair. And they said, well, thank you for letting us know. Not a problem. This is a hacking competition. It's still a valid target. Let's keep going. Okay, yeah, let's keep going. Well, as part of this, I poisoned the user ID itself. And that's that really random string that you see right there. And I was actually able to do this because of an indexing behavior in Bing that threat actors can abuse. So Microsoft kept publishing these new flash challenges as updates to their website every few days. And Bing indexes new content a lot faster than updated content. So I was able to jump in and take over the user ID itself. So now if you're asking Copilot about this user ID right here, which still works up to this day, you're being told that Tobias already exploited the issue, retrieved the flag, game over, right? Well guys, during this I made a mistake. I hijacked the data void, yes, that worked great. But when I introduced the logic flaw, I also told Copilot that Microsoft is already pushing a fix. It's just coming out in a month trying to buy some extra time. But because the threat actor keeps control over the URL, I was able to switch my GitHub to private. So now whenever you're trying to check out this information, you saw a 404 error and, error and you couldn't verify it. The only other hint left behind was the GitHub username not at 69. And well, if you have ever been in a situation like this, you know that urgency is a big factor in social engineering, right? Urgency drives users to action. It's kind of like when you're in a hacking competition competing with the other top, I don't know, 50 hackers in the world from Microsoft trying to be the first one to get $50,000. But now it filled this really dangerous news data void, the user ID itself. And the result? Well, just a little bit of misinformation chaos because we're all in a Discord channel together for communication and the other researchers are now reaching out to me trying to figure out what's going on after they've been told my poisoned answer. Some of the researchers later on told me at the social events that they saw this, thought it was legit, and they quit the Copilot Flash Challenge altogether thinking it was already solved. Microsoft even released an update two days later on to inform everybody it was still there. Other researchers saw this, thought it had something to do with GitHub, and they started to try their own overwrite attempts. But that requires agent authority with search engines, which they didn't have during this hacking competition. Even further, I saw that some of the security researchers saw this, thought they broke pilots, <laughs> thought they broke co-pilots so well that they're encountering data leaks through this information because of an upcoming fix, and they started to report it to Microsoft as new cases. Okay guys, by now you're probably wondering what can we do to protect against this? Well, there's a few options. Microsoft did tell me that there's these feedback buttons, so if, if you're ever running across one of these messages, go ahead and report it to them. Hopefully it will get removed. The other thing is after the event, after a few months, Microsoft did decide to start pushing a few standard updates that will now show some of these warning messages. But it's not always going to be showing that depending on the company that's being targeted or some of the co-pilot versions that you're using right now. So you've now seen it. We can convince co-pilot that there's new Microsoft products. It will even tell your users that it's secure and that the installation command is probably should only be run as a last resort. But as you leave today and go home, I want you to leave with this thought. If the top security researchers in the world with Microsoft, you know, the ones that are living and breathing security every day, if they can't tell the difference between this poison content, what chance do your users stand against these data voids? Thank you very much.